welcome to the Palm Beach Casino in London for the Party Poker World Open 6. Tonight we find out who takes that one remaining seat at the final for this year's event. Six players have already secured their seat at the championship table. And the runners-up have had a second chance in the playoffs, and that concludes tonight. It's sure to be fast and furious, so let's take a look at the lineup who are still in with the chance of winning the $200,000 top prize. Brandon Cantu, Mahmoud Bujawe, Jennifer Tilly, Toby Lewis, Marty Smith, and Frank Casella. Marty, tell us a story. You know how much time that's in this hand, I don't think. Are you bluffing? You're just bluffing? Yeah. I wanted to see the other one. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out really well. This was a little different, though. I was ahead the whole way. That was a good idea I had. See you later now. <laughs> it helps if you scream at the car. I do it better that way. Huh? And the thrills just keep on coming. It's going to be fast and furious, so they'll have to have their wits about them. It's a 30-minute clock and 100,000 chips starting stack, so good luck to everybody. Let's get the cards in the air. Last chance saloon here at the World Open 6. These six all runner up in their heat, and one of them will go to the final table. Thrilled to be joined by someone who's going to be at that final table. Mr. 2009, Yevgeny Timoshenko. Yevgeny, you know Frank Casella, obviously, because you, you, you beat him in your heat. Yeah, uh, probably. Anybody else at this table you know a bit about? Crows and Well, Jennifer Tilly is, uh, she's the girlfriend of Phil Locke, who I'm, I'm friends with, so I'm, I, I feel like I, I know a little bit about how she plays, just talking to Phil. And also Brandon Cantu is a very good professional player. So I I I know I I, I have a good feel for how he plays as well. Cool. Well, Mahmoud limped here, very first hand, hundred thousand starting stack, blinds a one and two. Yeah. And he did a lot of that in his heat. I mean, uh, this is the kind of thing people are gonna be be picking on those limps, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, especially if he's going to be doing a lot of limping in early position, it's going to be a lot of spots where some of the guys pick on the weakness and raise him in position and get in a really favorable spot. When you look at this format and it's, you know, you start with 50 big blinds, blinds go up kind of quick, don't you say to yourself that it's a really technical sort of thing that a lot of the young internet guys are going to have a big advantage in? Maybe. Second is nothing, first is everything, so you really have to amp up the aggression and really not pass up any profitable spots. It's such a fast structure that, you know, sometimes you're even going to have to force things. So you think actually just to stay afloat. it's so fast that everyone is going gonna, is gonna to almost be forced to do the right thing. Exactly, yeah. Brandon's actually from your neck of the woods, uh, I think in the northwest. He's got a reputation, I mean, as a really crazy player. Do you know about that reputation and stuff? like? Well, a lot of really good players, they they make their money by being deceptive. So I, I feel like Brandon's one of those players. People always think he's crazy, but a lot of times when a lot of money goes in the pot, he shows up with the goods. You know, he just uh, he, he advertises a little bit here and there, you know, playing some speculative hands, but then when the big pots come up, I feel like he tries to have a good hand well, he's and gonna, capitalize it on his image. He's going to need a good hand here. Mahmoud's limped again, and it's brought everybody Eight else in. Cantu in the blinds. Uh. Mahmoud's flopped a set. Wow. And Cantu with a flush draw, and he's bet 8,000. I mean, if Mahmoud raises, do you have enough chips to do anything but shove or what? It depends on how much Mahmoud raises. And it looks like he's just going to call. Which is great news for Brandon if he can find a check on this turn if he misses, right? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Could you check this turn if you're Brandon against Mahmoud? It, it depends what you think. Okay. okay, so that's a good check. And if it comes to spade, oh. If it came to spade, I think he'd have a good chance to bust Mahmoud there. Yeah, I think Mahmoud should bet here. Okay, good. Nice size bet. Half the pot. Wow, and Brandon doesn't even think about it. He just immediately releases. There there would have been a couple players with Brandon's cards who would have lost quite a bit of dough in that hand. 
Yeah, yeah, I think you're right on that. I guess he must have put Mahmood on an ace, so right. if he puts him on an ace, then checking back the turn with this pair of sevens is really the right play, especially since if Mahmood does have a three or five, he's ahead, there's no reason to bet. It's probably no big deal. Here, they're so short. If you're only calling to try to flop a hand, you really can't do that for 20% of your stack. Cool. Well, this is a pretty good example of what you're talking about, Mamu. Just going to call with the king queen. Because, I like that. Yep. And it is the kind of hand that could flop well. Cool. And this is wow. Well, this is this what Sorel was talking about. This is a pretty <laughs> loose call from the big blind from Cantu. I mean, in his heat, Evgeny, we saw. Oh, well, he's going to get in trouble here, but we saw Brendan. Managed to win okay. so many pots with weird hands from the blinds. Twelve passes. You know. Yeah. This could be really good news for Brandon, couldn't it? Because Jennifer's led at this for twelve k. Yeah. Well, it depends if uh, if Mahmoud raises or not. I feel like if Mahmoud just calls, I I don't think Cantu is gonna fold to just one bet because the flop is so dry. Two seven queen. There's no draws. People are gonna be Brace. bluffing at it a lot. Passes. Okay, so he decides to raise. And and this might still be a tough spot for Cantu because it's such a dry flop. People really like to bluff these flops because you either flop a strong hand like top pair or you miss it completely. There's no draws. There's, you know, ace-king is a great hand pre-flop, but on this flop, it's it's really nothing. You could be drawn dead. He's made a good decision there. Yeah. Are you bluffing? Can I see that one? Just, uh... Why don't you turn that over just so we believe you? Mm -hmm. Which we gotta see Which one. one? I wanna see. This one. This one. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to see the other one. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I want. Oh, I want to do that. <laughs> Join us after the break for more action from the Runners Up Heat here at the Palm Beach Casino in London. Welcome back. Power lineup, but just one seat at that final table. And no hanging around with the 100,000 starting stack, though. Marty Smith hasn't done anything but yawn so far. Maybe, though, the most experienced in this format. Oh. Former Poker Million champion. Mahmoud, though, playing just about every hand. Pass. Brandon, wow. really, you don't Brandon. really think Wow, that's what a hero. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what you just said right now is that, like, Jennifer Tilly, Toby Lewis, Marty Smith, the three of them. Cool. Jennifer's called there. Would that have been a good spot for her to, to, to actually three bet? Yeah, yes. yeah, that would have been a great spot. Yes. Three bet might be better than just call here because it's it's such cool. a... Tough, pl uh, tough hand to play out of position. And you don't mind folding this to a four bet the a7. It's no hand really, right? Or oh yeah, of course. It's it's not a strong hand. You're basically just bluffing with it, bluffing with your ace. Check. Well, they've got to the flop, and Brandon is in a very tough spot check. here. Let's see if Jennifer Tilly bets her checks. Ten thousand. I, r I really want, I, I hope Mahmoud, oh. okay. I would have liked Mahmoud to raise here. And what would the line of reasoning be about why you should raise? He has he has a draw. Jennifer Tilly, he's out of position. So Jennifer Tilly, uh, there's a lot of hands like this, for example, that she's going to fold to a re-raise, but with the line that Mahmoud's taken, he, she could actually end up winning the hand with her very weak hand if he doesn't improve. Right, she probably has to fold a lot of queens and stuff yeah. as well. And there's yeah. already a lot of chips in the pot, and would this be in a winner-take-all format? You want to be aggressive and and gamble. Check. Well, Mahmoud's found the heart on the river, and he, I guess he's he's checked to call Yeah, he's here. definitely going to call here if she bets. And she she probably should be betting. or Right, there's 50 in the pot. You'd be taking a stab here, wouldn't you? Well, 20,000. Okay, I, if he has a heart, I don't think this is going to work. So it's just a matter of if you think he has a lot of kings and queens without a heart that you think you can take him off of right. with this bet, which who knows? Maybe he'll fold those, maybe he won't. 
All right. I, oh, right. If he's going to fold all one pair of hands yeah. and don't have a flush, then it's worth making a bet, perhaps. I would be shocked if he were to fold this. Call for the seven. And Mahmood is ruling this table. Yeah. First the set, now this flush. He's the chip leader by a large margin. I got the ace of hearts. You did? Yeah. Well, I wish we could have traded aces. <laughs> <laughs> local sort of favorite, Mahmoud Baroni. Uh, this is his local. This is where he plays the cash games. And there's a lot of people around rooting for Mahmoud to do well and make the final. It is really hard, nice. Yevgeny. Not that Mamu doesn't have poker experience, but I think this is his first ever tournament. Yeah. And there's such an adjustment, especially for a guy who plays the high stakes cash right. games where they're Both so deep all the time. Absolutely. And it's it's not only the, the stack size you have to adjust to, it's adjusting to how you have to approach tournaments. Right. I wonder if Mamu looked. <laughs> I'm playing the rush. Cards. He's yeah. playing the rush. This might be a little early in the day for my mood. He's a midnight. It man. is cheap. Free <laughs> flop. Yeah. Raised twelve thousand. Well, this is Frank with the re-raise from the big blind. What do you think of this play? I think it can be a good play. Uh, this time he's ran into a hand. There's no way Toby's gonna fold. King Queen suited is such a strong hand. He's at least gonna call. Pass. Wow, this is really surprising. And a play pretty much based on his image of Frank Cassell there, which appears, I guess so. Yeah. Even then, he I, I think he definitely could have called King Queen suited flops really well. Only been a dozen hands, Mahmoud. 168,000, which is really strong. Yeah. With still six players left. And, I mean, Jennifer has to kind of think about adjusting, even at this early stage, right? She's yeah. only got, what, Pass. 25 big blinds. Mm -hmm. How many ships does she have? 46,000. Six. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, this Praise. would be a good Four time to amp up the aggression if she has a good spot. Maybe someone raises Mahmood calls and she's in the big blind. That would be a good spot to squeeze. Four. Lewis is raised again. Mahmood has called again. I don't know. I've got this feeling about Brandon in the big blind. <laughs> Call. <laughs> He's pretty entertaining though, isn't he? Yeah. It'll be interesting if hearts come out there. You might get in some trouble. Ask and you'll receive. <laughs> and look, Mahmoud's got three Speak eights. of the devil. Oh, wow. Um, very good chance that somebody's going to go broke this hand. Yeah. 8,000. Like, overall, I mean, obviously, Mahmoud's raising if he knows what they have. But overall, wouldn't you want to call here because people just think you're so loose? Yeah, I, I think with how Mahmoud's played. I think he's going to call and call is probably the best play for him. Call. What about Brandon? Brandon is... I don't know what Brandon's going to do. Brandon's capable of anything. All in. Okay, so he goes all in. All in. He came to play. Yeah. Okay. And there's a real line of thought for this, right? You... you you, you squeeze kind of Toby Lewis off a lot of hands that beat you. Yeah. And then Mahmoud can't call because he, he yeah, doesn't have Yeah, he, he doesn't expect Mahmoud to have trip eights because Mahmoud can have just an ace high here. Any sort of flush draw, maybe a pocket Seven. twos, pocket fours, Seven. just so many hands. What do you think Toby would? Would Toby fold like two tens here? Or he'd definitely no, fold, he'd fold he ace wouldn't king. fold ace two king tens. That's yeah, he'd probably fold ace king. It's interesting if he decides to call with this or not. Oh my gosh! Wow, that's a good call. Mahmoud's gonna have all the chips! It is a good call. Yeah. And they're gonna just both be stunned when Mahmoud puts these chips in. Yeah. <laughs> call. Oh that's man. No, wait. No. Did he actually stop. go all in or just call? He said call. Oh, so says so stop. Be, be just everybody just. Okay, what's, ha what's happened here is. Um, 
Yeah. Toby, Toby Lewis is going to have some chips behind. Right, so there will be a side pot. My, my guess is they'll all go in on the turn no matter what comes. He's priced in now. He called off most of his stack, right. so he's not going to have much. Even if Mahmoud's hand was face up and it was just trip eights, he has to call. Try to wow, look at flush. look at Ken too. He's got he's 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 out. He's drawing yeah. like stone dead. And I mean, in your mind, you kind of you kind of respect the way everybody played this. Would you would you have played similar from all those seats? Do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think everyone played it fine. It's it's winner take all, so you, so you you have to gamble. You can't blame Cantu's all in. Uh, Toby made a brilliant call with the better flush draw. It was a brilliant call. Yeah, a real gambling type of call. Yeah. Wow. Right? And well, now Toby can catch a nine two to make a higher full house. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Toby Lewis has the hearts and the nine. And uh, Mahmoud's got all the rest. See what comes. Oh! oh. That's really unlucky for yeah. Mahmoud. Really unlucky. Who kind of showed that by playing all those car all those hands, he was really deceptive. Like. Yeah, he got his money in great. He just got really unlucky. I feel for him. Can too. And I'll tell you the most amazing thing. I mean, Brandon's thinking he made a play where if Toby hadn't made that great call, he gets yeah. the pot. Yeah. And and doubles through. It was really interesting. And I feel like some players might fold the queen high flush draw. They're putting, thinking Brandon either has maybe an eight or a higher flush draw, in, in which case they're screwed either way. So that was really a great call by Toby. I mean, so I, I, I can't imagine many people could have made it. I thought it, it was really super. Those hearts yeah. Yeah, Another one came in. Toby's he kind of deserves those chips. Yeah. Coming into this runners-up heat, Toby Lewis, it's a bit of a faster structure. So uh, are you comfortable with this sort of structure? Uh, yeah, more comfortable. I can get luckier quicker. So. <laughs> Is that the plan then? Just get in there, get a bit lucky? Pretty much. Yeah. I'll, pro I'll probably be a little bit quiet to start with and then just go for it. Yeah. Winner takes all and all that. Exactly, winner takes all, and if you do win this, obviously you get that seat at the final table. Have to, you know, earn it a little bit harder than everyone else who's already there. Yeah, that was the plan. I had planned to come second, and then so I could play this one as well, just for a little bit more, uh, more play. Yeah, and it gives you kind of a rocky story as well, you know, down and out, having to come back again. <laughs> <laughs> Were you, you know, lifting logs of wood and whatnot and running through the That's through the jungle? Was. I ran here this morning, so. You look pumped for this. Oh, I'm prepared, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, good luck out there. Cheers. <laughs> well, under the heading of must be nice, must be nice to be Toby Lewis, you know. No kidding. You know how it is when you're running. Yeah. You know, when you're in form, just everything yeah. clocks in. But he had to make a good call. Race, 4,000 I think what you said earlier, Yevgeny, is just proved so true is that Everybody, the, the, the structure is so fast and so winner take all that everybody is sort of forced into playing fast. That's their mindset when they yeah. get here. Cool. Like we're still in the first level. And do you like this for Toby to open things up, open it up right now, just never take his foot off the gas? Well, 10 9 suited is a great hand, so right. it's not like he is opening, uh, opening it up. 10-9 suited almost as a okay. premium hand and a great hand to mix in with your really strong hands, like big pocket pairs and ace-king. Right, so we don't actually know how much he's opened it up yet. Yeah. It's a premium hand to mix in with your ace-king. So if you're going to raise ace-king, two aces, it's two the premium kings, and one connect. other, yeah. <laughs> it's that it's, one. It's, yeah, it's the premium <laughs> suited connector. <laughs> Wow, wow, so out. Toby's shown a propensity to play very passively against one, Frank. Like, you, like, first the king-queen suited fold, and now this both like times he had the best hand. Uh, you Powerful. know, winning the first one, the closest I'd come before was fourth place. Right. So I felt like... Actually, Phil was in that tournament with Oh, he me. was, really? There was a one where he ended up heads up with Johnny Chan. Johnny sucked out on me oh, when right, I had pocket right, aces. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. That was a um, bunch of years ago. So, you know, I felt kind of snake bit for a Frank while. Frank Casella saying the first... WSOP final that. table he ever made was when Johnny Chan won his 10th bracelet, I guess. I don't remember that one. 
that was a while ago. Yeah, that's, that's a couple before years. my time. <laughs> I think that was the uh, first. Card stud, 10, it was actually the stud, Jennifer better, members it because it was the same the night she won her WSOP race on the ladies event. Oh, wow. It all happened Brian, on the same night. It's a good story. Yeah, I think it was. Must have been 2005, I guess. Must have been 2005. What? You prefer the mixed games to the no limit or the? Um, I prefer anything to. You just no limit Texas Hold'em, really. <laughs> yeah, no. Some, a lot of people do. Yeah. All in. Okay, All I, I like this play. Least interesting. She figures game. to have the best hand, so she's not gonna call. She's just gonna push all in. How much is that? And. I mean, how should Frank be thinking about this right now? He could be up against a bigger flush draw. Is well, that... if he sees Tully's hand, it's an easy call. Okay. But he has to be worried about higher flushes or maybe trips. If there is an argument for calling, just besides the pot odds and stuff, like 35,000 to him, he's, I call. if he loses, I he's call. still got a stack to play exactly. with. Exactly. I mean, that should come into it. If he or wins, he can el draw. eliminate a, a player and double up. To, well, not double <laughs> up, but get yeah, almost 200,000 chips. Or a smaller flush draw. Almost. Red! <laughs> it helps if you scream at the cards. That's Another good. red! More red! It's a good card for Tilly. Another red 10. Red! Small red! <laughs> Four red! Shout it out! Oh. Oh. oh well, Boy, these river fun, cards yeah. have been brutal. We'll see you later. Good no luck. Kidding. And good for Jennifer Tilly, Hollywood oh. actress, she made the good, aggressive and play of Genny like to no avail. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Well, that's a bummer. Cool. You said it was going to be all action here, and certainly you guys sat down ready to play, it looks like. Yeah, well, the format of this show was very fast and yeah. furious, and um, you really can't afford to make any mistakes. Mm -hmm. Or to miss cards as well. Right, right, right. Yeah, the cards just weren't agreeing with me today. Oh. Well, we're sorry to see you leave the table. Did you, uh, I mean, it's very short, but do you enjoy your, your time here? Yeah, it's, it's like life. Life is short, but it's fun while it lasts. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Welcome back. The chips are flying on our turbo table, so let's get back down there and take a look at the action for the Party Poker World Open 6. <laughs> this thing could be over in life really quick. Wow. Yeah. Actually, I'm getting, I think it's, it's kind of setting up nice because um, if the players get shorthanded early, group. that's going to give a lot of play yeah, towards the Yeah, that's going to be good. And that's, they that's down great. To all the personalities now. Would you actually like look at Toby and oh. say something Marty, like he should be opening all the time? I mean, well, <laughs> it's yeah, it's there's obviously pros and cons for both. I'm just right. saying that now the stacks Price are actually 10. pretty deep. That, for example, for to uh, Toby or Frank, I don't expect one of them to go broke Pass. anytime soon. Right. I feel Pass. like they're going to be playing pretty conservative, and for them to clash, they're both going to need strong hands. Cassell is isolated. Is he fr is he on the button or? Yeah, he's on the button. Okay. Ramud's limped and. Check. Check. So it's, it's a good place for Cassell to lose one street if he does it right, I guess. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it's tough to put Mahmoud on an ace Check. with this uh, with as many hands as Ten. he plays. Cool. I wonder if Frank's going to bed this river on a blank, thinking he has the best hand. Well, now he definitely is. Oh, oh my oh, gosh! Wow. Oh, my Anna gosh! And a call. Wow. Okay. It was I did not expect to see that. Yeah. And Mahmood is incredible because... I guess he was trying he was to bluffing. win a pot yeah, yeah. If, if Frank had a better ace in a yeah, sense. Yeah, that's what he was thinking he could push to pair off. Very interesting play. Yeah. And a, a, a gambling. It would have worked, I yeah. think, if, <laughs> if Frank just had two pair. I think he would have folded. That's that's tough timing for Mahmood. Big smile from the World Series Player of the Year. How are you with this sort of faster structure rather than deep stack? Um, 
I'm, it probably doesn't favor my play. Uh, I think I play a little like an older guy. I'm a little uh, tighter than uh, some of the young guns out there. But I'll, you know, I'll loosen up a little bit and try to adjust to the structure. Yeah, you like to play down the streets. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I like to, you know, take my time and uh, not get uh, too excited about hands. But you know, in a structure like this, some of the guys are just going to be pushing in. I think uh, real aggressively. Yeah, well, good luck out there. Thank you. Appreciate it. At least in this tournament, it's looked like people have more trouble adjusting to three-handed play than even head. They're more comfortable playing heads up than three-handed. And, you know, it's just like three-handed is really tough, isn't it? Yeah. It's very technical, like, or... Yeah, it's... It's... If you're a tournament player, you're definitely not going to have much experience playing short-handed. So the tournament players do have a tough time adjusting, but if you play a lot of cash games... Uh, short-handed cash games, three, four-handed, then you you pick up a pretty good feel for it. And raise to 24. Assuming Frank is going to call the raise. Oh, he's he's limped in here, or he's yeah, he's, with, with he's re-raised. Frank made it nine. Oh, did he? Okay. And Toby's made it 24. Cool. And this this is okay. From yeah. Frank, it's a pretty strong hand. Yeah, Rel uh, relatively. And also, Toby didn't make right. make the re-raise too big. It was only 15,000 more. And King 8 suited as a hand that flops pretty well. Saying in the stats uh, showed before that in Toby's heat, he won 25 hands leading up to the heads up. and. 24 of them were one pre-flop, which is just an amazing yeah. stat. I mean, um, so I think one thing he didn't really get a chance to do much of is play post-flop. Yeah. And pass. But kind of looks like he's fairly confident in that department. Yeah. Toby Lewis actually had a rise much similar to your own, Yevgeny, in that, you know, he was playing a lot of live events over here in Europe and doing well way before he was ever able to go to Vegas for the World Series. I think this year was his first year over there. Oh, wow. Well. You'd already won your um, you'd already I said, final table to WSOP Europe event before yeah. you were 21. And I think I won the Asian Poker Tour Asian before poker I was tour. 21, too. Pass. I think Marty's going to take a stand here. I said 29. That's exactly right. And pass. And Sorry. Sorry. pretty standard from your yeah. Point of view? Yeah. Yeah. Ace three suited a very strong hand, three handed. Raise to eight. Again. Very strong hand this time. Raise to twenty three. And, and Toby Lewis's hand is... Yeah. I mean, it is, is this above what you would consider a range? Is it very tempting to go for this one here? Absolutely. Or? Yeah. I'd be very impressed if Toby Lewis m managed to get away from his hand. Pass. Pass? Wow. I mean... That's a really good fold. It's sort of a dynamic thing that Marty wouldn't have done it the second time without a stronger hand? or Well, it, it was a tough fold because you think Marty might be going with a wider range of hands than that. Pass. He might re-raise with, with all pairs, with all aces, with some broadways, and against that range of hands, ace-8 is, is a very strong ace hand. Eight. So for him to fold that, putting him on an extra tight hand, uh, on an extra tight range of hands is very good. Little min raise, you can hardly pass here if you're Toby yeah. Lewis. Worried about getting himself in. Maybe he's a little suspicious. Cool. I'm trying to remember if Casella has done the min raise from the small blind. It feels like a spot where a lot of guys try to make a little bit of a larger raise if they don't want yeah. to. Yeah. Well, this is going to be an action flop. Ten. How should Toby be thinking about this? Should he be thinking about this, I want 
to get a lot of money in the pot now, even if he's got a pretty big hand? Because my hand probably not. I, I think calling's the better play, being in position. Check. He's gone favorite here, Toby. What's he gonna get called with that he beats if he bets? Is that what he's thinking, or? Well, if he bets really small. I think Casella would call with his exact hand. He could also bet small just to protect. I think. Call. Happened exactly like you called it. Bet half the pot, quick call. Here's the river. A nine would. Oh, that's a split pot. Okay. If Frank called the turn, I, I think you should call a, a river bet now. Unless. Depending on what Toby bets, of course. Huh. He didn't bet. Was there a was there a spot there to try and push him off? Do you think? I think so. I think he's saying to yourself he does not have the nine here. I thought you had I, I think so. Hand. Frank called yeah. so fast in the turn it really didn't seem like he has a nine. He could have a four, but the four gets counterfeited on the river. So I think that would have been a good spot to try to push Frank off a chop. Well, they played two levels now. Three and six thousand will be the blinds. Not much between Lewis and Casella. I guess Marty's come back close to even. There's, what do you think's in it here? I think it's probably going to come down between Toby and Frank heads up. Unless Marty catches some big hands. Yeah, yeah, I should just way bigger than anything else. Raise 12,000. Yeah? Yeah, 600, 700 runners. How much? 12, 12. 6 more. Cool. So Toby's racer and the Franks, I, I guess the idea, because this is he's done this a couple of times, he's just sort of, is he balancing his range because he wants to peel off a lot of flops? Yeah, that's that's part of it. Another thing is if he re-raises his tape of hand, Toby's only going to call it with worse hands, and he might even bluff him sometimes if he notices Franks re-raising too many marginal aces. So it, it's really a good idea to to just call with some of these hands. Oh, because he's folding to a shove, so... Yeah, he's, he's folding to a shove, block. and he's out of position, so he doesn't want to put too many chips in preflop because he's just going to get in too many sp spots if he plays these marginal hands so aggressively. Well, an interesting card on the river because it's, it's given them the same hand. Um, I mean, Casella was winning when he bet the turn. Yeah. Lewis kind of... An interesting call there. Yeah. Uh, he was just calling, hoping uh, Frank had has nothing or a draw, and he's just going to give up if he doesn't improve on the river. It's fairly interesting, isn't it? Because, like, Casella would have put Lewis on an ace-high, yeah, an ace-high sort of hand. And so he's well an aware that he might be out kicker here. I had the yeah. hand. I had the winner ace before. Shot uh, pot. Yeah. Sort of unfortunate, unfortunate at the same time. Unfortunate yep. to see the eight. It's fortunate not to be I guess I shouldn't be happy to get half of it, but... Ugh. Same as the 6-5, 10 Huh? Same as the 6-5 and the 10s. You were winning. I was winning. We chopped. This was a little different, though. I was ahead the whole way. Yeah. I'd do it better that way. <laughs> 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 Just thinking that I didn't want to say it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, what, I almost didn't say anything. I'm like, well, that ain't the same. <laughs> Toby's thinking to himself, well, if you thought you had the best hand, you should have re-raised, Frank. <laughs> I mean, I guess Marty's, is, has he been too patient? Is he? Is it well, he's, he's still in it. Anything can happen. All he needs is just one double up, and he's, uh, he right. has more than he started with, and then one more double up, and he might be chip leader. This is uh, this is definitely a hand to go with King Queen. I think he's gonna get called too if he re-raises. How much is it? He's done with the first part. Yeah, I mean when Casella gets counted down, Queen Ten, you're not really expecting to be dominated that often with that hand, are you? It's not like you'd well, rather have Queen Ten here than Ace Three if you're Frank. I mean, yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Forty-three thousand more. It's going to be a lot of ace highs, maybe yeah, pairs, nines? a lot of hands that you're flipping against. Really you and even if you're dominating, you're getting a pretty good nine. price. You're going to be an underdog, but 
Who Sometimes you, you're Forty. gonna get lucky and you know win a big pot. It's hard to try to balance all this out with the structure we're playing. How much time we got left in this level? Seven. You don't got much time left in this hand. I don't think. <laughs> <It's> Ninety seconds. <laughs> <laughs> How much is it for Frank to call? It's 43, and there's uh, 74 in the yeah. pot. So yeah, that's calls. like 7 to 4, isn't it? Uh -huh. I mean, that's a pretty, yeah. pretty, yeah. good, that's a pretty good price, good anyway. Oh, wow. Something. That's like the worst case scenario. Yeah. I didn't want you to have one of my cards. I wanted to have two live cards. <clears throat> yeah. 10 jack I would have rather had. Well, there Smith all in. The 10, the key card, obviously. Yeah, you definitely want the 10 jack. Wow. I know, right? See if the turn gives them some outs. Good bet. Nine or king. Ooh, that's a good one. Wow, wow. you really called the sweat in. That was perfect. So what is it? What is it? Uh, the ten's no good. The eight or the queen? Yep. Doesn't good. Cheers. And I don't know how that's going to affect the action. It's, I wonder if Toby so, Lewis is happy or sad about that pocket. result. You, know, you, you like being a big same chip leader, but you'd rather yeah, be heads up. Thing. I'll bet he's kind of indifferent. This isn't one yeah. of those extreme spots where you're rooting hard for one player over the other. The stakes are high and the blinds are getting even higher. So join us after the break for more from the Palm Beach Casino in London. Welcome back. We're halfway through our runners-up heat here at the Palm Beach Casino. Three players remain, but who will go through to the final? Let's go down to the table and find out. Just the three of them playing for just the one. You know, any of these players, Evgeny, would be tough at the final table. Cassell in such great form here. Grace, 14 As is Toby Lewis on the other side of the pond. Oh, hello. Big, big hand. I don't think Toby's going to get Q here with Ace King. I think he's going to put in a re raise and. Casal is probably going to fold, but we'll see. Re raise. To 40,000 total pass. I think you can make an argument for doing anything in any spot. It just <laughs> wouldn't be good right. a lot of the time. The other arguments way far, yeah, far superior. Yeah. 370. Lines now up to five and ten thousand. Ace on the button and just a little standard race here. Yeah. Be interesting to see if to Marty decides to make a play with the sander if he's just gonna fold it well he's got exactly 10 or 11 Hold big in. blinds and what do you think about this play it's uh. it's fine i i, I actually would have liked it more at the previous blind level i think uh, toby might be priced in with his ace this time but if the if the blinds were Nine three six i i feel like this is a hand that he could get toby to fold Yeah, he decides to call. So you need to get lucky. Was hopefully <laughs> well, Marty happy says he needs to get lucky. He does, and he might be worried he's dominated. He's not. He's just got the live cards. It's about six to four here. Got a hold. Yeah. There's the king. Uh -oh. Wow. There's a chink in the armor. I'll tell you, I don't know if you noticed, but the way that uh, the cards get spread in this tournament, there's always like a triple sweat with the flop. You know, yeah. comes out like boop, boop, boop. Yeah. We've had some. Uh, and uh, Marty just doesn't want to see the ace. Only I should gamble and it's paid right. off. Yeah. Definitely. It, that was a pretty marginal. I think, uh, like, for the reasons you said, a lot of people would have waited to the next hand and shove when they had fold equity, but yeah. he just went with that one. 40, 150. Well, Somewhere Toby was giving him a lot of respect. He was yeah. just hoping so. Toby was stepping out of line with some marginal hand and he could get Toby to fold a weak hand. Plan's working out good so far. <laughs> Casella's problem is that uh, 
He's, he's, his cards have gone so dry in his mind that he's going to pick up something that's like half a hand and just go yeah. with it, you know. Oh, wow. I don't know. Oh, Marty can't fold the ace-8, can he? Toby's almost certainly going to go all in, and Marty's going to be all in. faced with a tough decision. And whatever he does. And a call. Yeah, he, he calls quickly. Wow. You can't blame him for four. calling. Yeah. Not many so aces left. left. Well, Toby's got a few chips back. Marty Smith all yeah. in. And if this ace king holds, and it will a lot of the time, eight. he's going to be massive chip leader going to Yeah, yeah another chop. Well, now there's some chop pot possibilities. A jack or nine. Lots of chop outs now. That's not That's one, of one of them. It's not going to do it. I think it'll be oh, yeah. No, it looks. No, I might and yeah, for Toby Lewis, yeah. that's the perfect time to pick up a hand Andy, like sir. that. Marty yeah. Smith going to be out in third. What you, could do. you know what's funny is when yeah, I was when you're this When you're on the roll, life, you're on the roll. I assumed that there was the two people from this event going on to the final, mm. so that it would be eight-handed at the final. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been better. He must uh, be a changes. lawyer. <laughs> We've lost Marty Smith in third place here. It seemed like the stack sizes were really awkward. It made decisions kind of difficult. Yeah, it kind of did. Um, look, I think you were nearly puck committed for the opening race there at the end when we were also even. Maybe not quite from the last time. Like I don't think I had the call with the ace yet, but I wanted to gamble there. I don't really want to play flops with these guys, so I was happy to get it all in before the flop. Unfortunately, it didn't go your way. No, um, I kind of I was talking to someone before the heat, like, and uh, he said, "How do you see it going? You probably need to get a lot of chips early in this." And I said, "No, I'm, I'm going to play really tight early. I'll probably empty myself away a little bit, and then hopefully double up and get back into it." And nearly worked out. You know, I just needed one more double up, and that would have got me close to the line. They're fidgeting. Head up now. One player at the final table, you have Genny, Toby, and Frank so Casella, and, and you get I mean, wow. three to one chip lead. That's pretty much decisive, yep. right? It's not decisive, but I definitely like Toby's chances here. Look at those stats. He's been more aggressive. Uh, the V-chip very similar, and he's won a lot more pots pre-flop. Yeah. Uh, Cold deck hand, or? I stopped off. 1.4 to 1. I, I Small won. pots or big pots if you're Toby Lewis right now? And then I yeah, well, the it, <laughs> it depends on your cards, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, you had a slight chip lead over Frank Casella when you got heads up yeah. with him. What, was your, what, what were you thinking to yourself? Well, I, uh, I just tried to play position. Um, I, I tried to, I raised small preflop because I, I, won, I wanted to keep the pots small <laughs> preflop and then, you know, start from there go from there try to build them after the flop when I have more information uh, and I, I'm really comfortable with my heads up game so I was I was uh, you know hoping to to play more post flop than pre flop with Frank but as it turned out I just put a sick yeah, cooler on him and cooler on him with the aces it was all ace over king. this is uh, this is gonna be it oh, he'll go right here queen, sure I mean yeah 27. Oh, and if Toby goes, well, he's going with it. He really should, shouldn't he? Of course, yeah. And Casella Could be all over here. Yeah, he's going to be the... Say, I'm the victim of two coolers oh, in a row, although this is a straight a race. Yeah. Um, if he loses this, though, he'll feel like he was double bubbled. Yeah. That's what happens when you get short. You pick up a hand like sevens and ace-queen, and they're both monsters. So you just got to get it in preflop. If Casella can hit here, the ace or the queen, they'll be level in chips. Well, he does need to hit. Not even the three or four would get him out of this. It's over. Yep. <laughs> Toby that Lewis running good. Yeah, and I mean, when you're fun. running better than Hard the 2010 yeah. World Series of Poker Player of the Year, you're running good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no kidding. Away it goes. So Frank Casella, he's had a great tournament. He's going to be out. Toby Lewis, well, you can look forward to facing him at the final table, I guess. Yep. He will be a handful. We've lost Frank Casella, unfortunately, in our runners-up heat. You've gone out second. Uh, going into the heads-up, obviously, Toby had quite a few chips, too. So there's, you know, not a lot of wiggle room for you. 
Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, I had to really double up once. Um, what did I have on that? I mean, I think if I double up there, we're pretty close. Yeah. We'd be about even at that point. I think it's anybody's game, but you got to get lucky that first time. And Toby Lewis goes through to the final. Pretty pleased with that, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, that's what I wanted to do. So come second in the first one and win the second one. That's pretty, pretty good stuff. Yeah, not bad at all. And you had a pretty good day there as well. You went into the heads up, you know, you had lots of chips. How did you feel you played today? Um, I took a gamble early on. I knew the... Uh, the flash I, hand. I knew, yeah, I knew I knew the stacks were going really quickly. And uh, I didn't think uh, Cantu had a great deal. I mean, I was kind of hoping he had a, a lower flush draw like he did. And then the guy behind had a, had three eights. And I was like, oh, uh -huh. marvellous. And... Uh, I got there and made a heart on the river somehow. There wasn't that many left, but I, I found one. Yeah, it definitely paid off for you as well, and hopefully the luck continues into the final. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, it'll be great. I'm hoping to win. It's been a roller coaster ride for Toby Lewis here at the Palm Beach Casino in London, but this EPT champion has secured a place at the final table and a part of the $480,000 prize pool. And what a lineup it is! With high stakes cash game players and major title holders, we're in store for one hell of a final. Very good bet. It's still part of the game, isn't it? My plan is foiled. You must have a check. I have one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. You got lucky. Now that good, I want to keep it. I'll be honest, I didn't realize I had that much. It's getting bashed up here. Yeah. Bamu! <laughs> Triple loop! Oh! Oh! oh. 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 oh.